Everything you need to know to visit the Grand Canyon West, home of the Skywalk. The first thing you should know is just some information about Grand Canyon West. And what you should know right off the bat is it is not operated by the National Park Service. It's not part of the same Grand Canyon that you've heard of the North Rim and the South Rim. This is on Native American land. It's operated by the Hualapai Native American tribe. It's definitely most famous for the Skywalk. It's also most famous because it's the closest to Las Vegas. It's heavily marketed as a tourist attraction to visitors in Vegas. Most of the people that are here generally have done the drive in from Las Vegas. But in addition to the Skywalk, uh, you can definitely see great views of the canyon. You can do some hikes, you can eat, you can take a zip line, you can even stay here in some rustic cabins if you want to. All right, but uh, let's talk about how much this attraction costs. And the cost is important because this is significantly more expensive than visiting the National Park, but maybe that's okay because it's close to Las Vegas and you don't have to drive as far. So so the prices I'm gonna share with you are approximate because they kind of change depending upon the date. But on average, the general admission to come in is $50. That gets you in the door or through the tent that we'll see in a moment. Uh, if you want to go on the Skywalk, that's an additional $25. If you wanna take a helicopter ride through the canyon, yes, you can take a helicopter ride through the canyon, that's about $300. There's a zip line that's $45. Uh, and some other things you could do that the prices range are whitewater rafting expeditions through the Colorado River. That depends on how long your expedition is gonna be. Uh, when you do buy your tickets, uh, if you're buying them at home, which I'd recommend because then you don't have to like wait in a long line when you get here, print them out or make a screenshot on your phone because when you get out here to this remote place, you might not have cell phone service and so really key to have that print out or the screenshot. If you really didn't get the screenshot, they do have free Wi-Fi, which uh, is nice in a pinch. The third thing to know is about the Skywalk itself. And the Skywalk is the world's second largest cantilever bridge. The largest one is in China. This one was the largest when it was built. Originally built in 2007, it goes 70 feet out over the Grand Canyon. It's 10 feet wide. It has a glass bottom and it's really an engineering marvel. Uh, once you've bought your ticket to go on, then when you get here to uh, Eagle Point, you'll wanna go ahead and get in line. Yes, line, there can be really long lines. When I was here, the line to get on the Skywalk was about an hour and 15 minutes, so go ahead and plan for that. Uh, come early if you want to avoid the lines, that is what they say. Now, once you get to the front of the line, you have to stow all of your personal items, no cameras, no phones, no backpacks, you need to put those in a locker, uh, and then they send you through a metal detector to make sure you don't have any of those things. After the metal detector, they have you put booties on your feet. Uh, you might see pictures of the Skywalk back in the day where people were wearing normal shoes. Well, apparently people's shoes were scuffing up the glass so much that now you wear booties. And then you head out there as soon as a photographer is available. What, a photographer is available? Yes, they have. Uh, Hualapai Nation photographers on hand to take pictures of you. Uh, if you want to buy the photos at the time I did this video, one was $25 and the set of four they take of you is $50. Now the view out there, it really is amazing. It's worth it to do it if you have the time. Again, if you have the time, because you're gonna need to plan for that uh, potentially long wait. What's really cool up there is you can see straight down to the bottom, uh, which you can't see off the edge, right? You don't wanna get too close to the edge because you don't wanna fall. But if you're up there, then you don't have to be all that worried of falling. And after they've taken your photos, if that's what you want, if you don't want any photos, that's fine, they'll just let you go. But after your photos taken, you can spend as much time up there as you want. Uh, and how long was that? For me, it was about five minutes. Um, but uh, you know, how long can you stand there staring at the edge? Uh, and it's kind of cold today too. I'm here in December, so quite cold. That's why I've got this big jacket on. All right, now let's talk about getting here and getting around. It's a pretty easy two and a half hour drive from Las Vegas. The first half of it, you're gonna spend on the Interstate 11 to the Highway 93. Then you're gonna take a left on Pierce Ferry Road. This is where you're gonna spend the next half or the last half on kind of a two lane country road. It's a pretty neat road. It winds its way through some desert towns and also some really neat Joshua trees. And then you will get to this large parking lot in front of this tent. Uh, this is where you will buy tickets if you didn't buy them already, and then you will board a shuttle bus to go to the actual attractions inside. If you don't want to drive here, uh, you can take a tour bus here. There's like a ton of tour operators that'll bring you here. There's a bunch of buses parked in the parking lot right now. But then when you get on the shuttle bus, it's about a five minute ride that'll take you to the first point, Eagle Point. 
And when you do get dropped off from the bus coming down that road, that'll bring us to the fifth thing you need to know about, which is Eagle Point, the first stop on the bus. Eagle Point, home of the Skywalk right back there, called Eagle Point because just out in this canyon, the rock formation actually looks like an eagle. Things you'll find here in addition to the Skywalk, in that building, you'll find a gift shop, restrooms, you will find a sit-down restaurant uh, up on the second floor, and you'll find a cafe just out here for quick serve American type food, chicken fingers, hot dogs, that sort of stuff. Uh, and you'll also find some Native American house displays. And then once you're done with the Skywalk and you're done seeing the Eagle and maybe got some food, it's time to get on the bus to stop number two, Guano Point. And after about an eight minute bus ride that drops you off right over here, we are now at Guano Point. I think the views here are even more spectacular than Eagle Point because you can climb up to these rock outcroppings and you can get 360 degree views all around you, including of the Colorado River right back there. Can you see it? If I'm tall enough, Colorado River right back there. Uh, in addition to the views, there's another big rock outcropping you can get to over there. There's a hiking trail you can take down to it, and then you can see the remnants of the guano mining operation. What's guano? Guano is bat poop, uh, which is rich in nitrogen. And in the 1950s, for about 20 years after that, there was an operation here that mined the guano, which is really good for fertilizer at this point. Uh, from the restaurant back here, when it's operating, they serve uh, like pulled pork barbecue, uh, right now it's under construction, so they've only got cold food like chips and snacks and drinks. And at the shuttle stop to go to the final stop, Hualapai Point, there's a little market out here where they're selling Native American trinkets and souvenirs out here on Christmas Day. Uh, so probably why there aren't that many of them, but there's a lot of tables and maybe more vendors on other days. Oh, and as it turns out, the shuttle bus actually doesn't take you all the way to Hualapai Point. The shuttle bus from Guano Point brings you back to where you started at the visitor center. And if you wanna to go to Hualapai Point, then you drive your car there. So no admission to go to Hualapai Point. So I'm gonna get in my car and head over there. And after a quick five minute drive, it brought me over here to this pretty small parking lot. In comparison to where I just came from, there is like nobody here. Uh, this is definitely like the newer attraction, I would say. There are signs that say general admission required, but there's Nobody here to check tickets, maybe if it's busier. Uh, it is like an old Native American town. Over here, there's uh, the zip line office. You can rent bicycles. There's a restaurant down here that we'll check out in a minute. There's a hiking trail off there in the back. There's a gift shop, restrooms. There's a shooting gallery right here. And finally, you can stay at cabins at the Grand Canyon West. There are these rustic cabins. They start at about $200 a night. Uh, they also have RV hookups around here. Those are about $20 a night. And uh, they also operate a lodge, the Hualapai Lodge, but don't confuse it because it's actually about two hours away from here near the Colorado River. Great if you're going for a rafting expedition, not great if you're here to see the actual Grand Canyon West. But now I think the coolest thing at Hualapai Point is the Native American restaurant where you can get a Native American taco. This is on fry bread. $25 gets you the taco plus a drink. That's just, everything's $25 here. Uh, it has uh, beans, beef, you can also get chicken or beef and chicken, lettuce, tomato, get it with some salsa. I've never had a taco this big. Mm. Mm. Oh good, good chicken side. Oh, and I took a bite out of the beef side here already. I definitely recommend this. And if you do wanna check out this restaurant, they're open for breakfast starting at 9 a.m. and they close a little before six. So now for the last thing to know, is it worth it? Let's see, for me, it was uh, about $75 for the ticket, plus the Skywalk, plus $50 for the photos, plus $25 for lunch. So grand total, I spent $150 to come here to the Grand Canyon West. And for me, it was worth it because I don't think I'm ever gonna come here again. It was neat to go on that skywalk. I've seen it in so many places. It's definitely a bucket list kind of attraction. I could also totally see how that could all very much add up if you have a big family. I also don't know that it was worth so much that I want to come back here again. But uh, for you, if you're considering visiting here and you're in Vegas uh, and you're looking for a day trip that you don't have to stay overnight, you can come here and you can go back, then I would recommend it to you. If you're going to the Grand Canyon National Park or you really like hiking or you really like camping or you like real active things that you would do in real national parks, 
that's not this. This is definitely much more of a canyon amusement park. But speaking of the Grand Canyon, if you want to go to the Grand Canyon, you can check out my travel guide right here, all about the Grand Canyon National Park. Or if you're going to Vegas, check out my videos on Vegas right here. Usually I won't say goodbye because I'll see you in one of those videos.